A very good evening, swooping in to Jeff's um, court. G series uh, 280. Uh, 280 select. And uh, what have we got here? Well, Court Tech, Core Tech Factory, uh, made in Indonesia. Nice, nice, nice. Actually, I think that's actually a bone nut, believe it or not. But it's a bit pingy, so we'll get rid of it. And we'll also get rid of that metal string tree. Um, da -da 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 -da. With that, we've got a nice um, heel mounted adjuster. Yes. We've got a sort of flamey looking body. We've got a nice bridge. We've got a sort of brushed steel looking, matte looking bridge pickup. Five way switch. Um, master volume or volume tone and we've got a bit of your old plastic gunge under there which we'll take away <sighs> horrible stuff and just push on push on and push off push off there we go and in this on this guitar we have I don't know if you can see it yes you can we have a little tightening grub screw for the push-in arm. So kind of a bit like a vintage, only the vintage is foolishly underneath the thingy, uh, underneath the plate, so you have to kind of press this down to get at it. But this one seems to be in a smart place. And so let's see, just a quick tweak adjustment. Anyway, how are you all? It's been um, a day since I was last filming. A little. Actually, <laughs> having said that, it's not the best of places to be positioned, and it's also not gripping it very well. Let's try a different, shorter device. Um, yeah, hope you're keeping well and everything's good as we cruise into the middle of September. Um, <laughs> okay, yeah, a bit better. You hear the ping already? See, we don't want that. Um, so yeah, nice thing. We've got a nice forearm slope. We've got a binding. Sorry, let's zoom out a bit. We've got um, sort of brown, two, three part, three part body. Um, we've got some slightly resonant over sympathetic vibrations going on on these uh, springs. We've got a, a sloped heel and a kind of nice rounded-ish heel there. We've got caught <coughs> locking tuners there. We've got a nice belly carve here. So a lot to like about this guitar. And um, really, it's in pretty good playing shape. So what it's in for is just a tweak, really. Um, there is a... Let's, we've got a whole page of notes, which... Uh, we've got a... So the notes say... This is for the nerds amongst me, us, you and me. Uh, pardon me. Um, the notes say, uh, bone nut, okay-ish, but first fret action is too high and it's pinging. Um, relief is too high at 0.4 mils. Uh, last fret is quite low. Um, currently not much fret slap, which is good. Strings not stretched out, so it's going out of tune. There is an annoying sympathetic resonance um, which Jeff has tried to stifle with a cloth. Let's investigate, look into that. Trim bridge currently not parallel, so it's pointing backwards, so we'll we'll want to get it up parallel to the fingerboard or on the same plane as the fingerboard. The high E, uh, e and B, 15th fret bends, choke out on fret 16, so either 15 is low and 16 is high, but we need to kind of iron that out. Um, and then trim is loose. We've got good staggered tuners. Uh, hang on, are they staggered tuners? No, they are not. I thought they were staggered tuners when I first looked at it. Hold on, before I go completely bar me. Um, no, they're not. <laughs> I wrote down staggered tuners, but they ain't. And then, of course, the fun part of the uh, thing is always finding a nut that matches. So we had a 35 E to E, 41.5 width, 3.1 front to back width, depth and a five mils tall and of course you can see <coughs> the most ideal one not available anywhere 
second one nearest second nearest was available so i got that one which is this baby but it's a absolute pain and absurd finding these things every time there's no quicker way i've got the tusk catalog which i have to kind of open up pdf catalog which i open up find the one and then go and find where i can buy it from i used to buy from jhs i have a repair account there but i have to say it's now no longer it's just stopped being a saving i'm afraid and they basically charge as much as i can get them for on amazon and the fact is um i can get them uh quick on amazon if not cheaper um right so <coughs> uh let's let's i know what the various things are uh, that relief and so on so let's let's get the relief dialed out these are nines on here and we're going to put nines back on so there's nothing should be nothing overly complex about this um what i want to do as always is when you when i start a setup like this i'm going to pull in the tremolo arm uh, and kind of deck it out um, it's basically just sort of i mean sometimes they don't want to go all the way in and if, if not then don't but usually you want to go most of the way in they they are designed to go all the way in obviously it, it decks out on the floor at some point anyway like it is now and there's still a bit more to go so we do want it in as far as it will go now obviously that is going to give us a uh, effectively a decked thingy and then what we do want to do is to um, lift it up to a certain position a horizontal position which is going to be there so that's going to be my uh, target and just get it to stay there it's my target setup um, now the problem is if I do it that way let's just think it's a little bit fiddly if I do it that way let's <coughs> let's leave it let's leave it locked down for now and what I'll do is I'll adjust the action accordingly and then I'll readjust it when I come to set everything up so I guess what I'm saying is I prefer to do fret leveling with the uh, tremolo effectively locked down so I'm just going to pull it back into its little recess and that's it fully down um, now obviously that will change the action here a little bit um, so we'll get ready to adjust that as well I'm going to move you around I think I'm pointing a little higher up because normally I seem to manage to cut my face out of everything that's I know it's very kind of me to save you um, I've got my new ultra zoom glasses so what am I going to do okay we know first of all that we need to make an adjustment to the uh, relief because we know it is it's about 0.4 a little bit too much it's not massively over but so I'm going to find myself a smallish matching ish uh, thing <laughs> one of these and I'm going to what am I going to do I'm going to tighten it so I'm going to put it in there and give it a little tight and turn and then see what it looks like afterwards about right now it'd be very flat and out of tune oh ho, ho, guess what we got a new but you know what's going to happen is I'm going to hold this here in my hand and the neck, the other one is going to appear on the wall like it's never gone anywhere. But it has gone somewhere. It's not on the wall. Is it? No. I'd be mad if it was on the wall. So here's our new one. So we're going to take this nut out, but I'm just aiming first of all to get the first, sorry, get the last right action um, right from the point of view of this hard-tailed 
And when I say hardtailed, I mean just push, pull down at the back. So I'm just, for me, it's just hardtailed as in it's out of the way. It's not, it's not playing any part. It's, we've just got a low action. I'm going to raise the action to where I need it to be using the saddles for now while I do the fret leveling work and so on. And then we'll come back down afterwards when it comes to the actual setup. So I'm going to 1.5, which is my normal target. And then I'm going to, sorry about the view, it's probably terrible. I'm going to crank these up a bit more to get up, be on its hind legs a bit. Come on. So we are in mid of September. Um, I've spent the last two weeks doing refrets. And the LP Les Paul one is still on the go, but I'm getting there. Um, tomorrow or the day after, I'll be sort of moving that one along. I've got a bit of uh, finish repair on the binding um, on the edge, really, um, which is a shame because it's very difficult to uh, use the old. Uh, edging, edge leveling, edge trimming, edge beveling block without ending up touching the uh, binding finish. And if you don't, if you try and avoid it deliberately, what happens is you you just don't get it. Um, you don't get a flush cut, which means that the fret metal will slightly stick out. Um, we really don't want that. So anyway, it's a, so just a little bit of a an issue. So I've got that to build up. Um, and originally it was uh, poly, um, but I've I've already oversprayed it a little bit with nitro. So I'm going to carry on with that, and I will use some, uh, I think a little bit of amber nitro on the edge. Now whether I, I think I'll probably. I could do one of two things. I could paint it on by hand, which might actually be an easier way of doing it than spraying. Spraying is a bit of an overkill for just fingerboard edge. So I may just um, hand paint it on and then sand back, which will be, again, fairly straightforward. But if I paint it on, then I can actually mix up the colour using a little bit of spirit stain instead of using the amber spray, which is tends to be a little bit on the over yellowy side anyway that's the best pores different thing we are here doing something else so that's the last fret action height that i want So that's my playing action. Um, just double checking. Yeah, that's. Ah, yes, I'll put on the grandpa glasses. My new prescription. Super duper. Yep, yep, yep. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. Ooh, that's close up. Maybe I'll leave it on. Okay, so I know that my neck relief is good for the gauge of strings I've got. I know my last fret action is good at the moment. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to remove... Um, yep, I'm going to remove... Try and remove... Slack off the strings and let's get this nut removed. Now, because these are locking uh, tuners, I may not get a very successful re-fitting and retuning out of them because once they've been clamp they often break on undoing or on doing up the second time so if I get a well, hopefully I'll get a, a second go out of the for example the G this is now still very tight and I, I really have to I've got to pull that a long way over out of the way which is an absolute pain because it gets in the way of whatever I'm trying to do next and what I'm trying to do next of course is to find a tapping screwdriver and I'm going to try and get this bone nut out of its socket. 
I, I don't even know what you can see. That's the terrible, terrible camera work. The worst. The very worst. Um, there we go. Sort of okay. So yeah, I've got these strings. Um, I might even, for ease of access, I might even actually have to just let that one move, which is terrible really. So I'm going to support the neck here and I'm going to give this a little tap. Thankfully that came out nice and easy. So really have done without fighting this one. That's a bone nut. Now um, we'll cut the packaging and get the new tusky one out. Now, th I think the court being slightly non-standard um, we, we don't know whether it's going to be a perfect fit or what's going to happen with the height or anything. So bear with me. Right, I've stopped the video somewhere. I'm going to have some funny editing to do now. <gasps> oh dear. Accidental, handling it all wrong. And I've basically shot myself in the foot. Because I've now got multiple sections of video which I didn't want. So what I'm just going to do here is I'm just going to flap down the front face of this nut very slightly and just until it fits um, yeah it's been a it's been a very very interesting few weeks we've got over here in the UK we've got all kinds of weird stuff going on we've got Russell Brand being accused of several counts of rape and <coughs> <coughs> abuse, sexual abuse, um, which is kind of a shame because I thought he'd grown into being a kind of quite a decent sort of guy. But I hope, well, I mean, I don't, I don't know what's true and what isn't, but <coughs> um, having said that, you know, the sort of ego of fame thing of the showbiz that he's been involved in for so long is uh, probably has a bit of a negative consequence on the state of the person's ego. I think it's hard to, hard to stay sane. Um, so you can see what I'm doing is I'm just uh, trying to thin this nut down just enough to get it to fit snugly and no more, no less. Um, kind of nearly there. Now, yeah, so so there's that <coughs> that going on. Um, so I I guess that it's just a the reason I find it odd is that I think in in the UK um, as soon as somebody gets accused like Russell Brand, it's not quite fitting in. Just a fraction, fraction, something still. Um, yeah, as soon as somebody gets accused, you know, we have this idea of innocence and proven guilty in a court of law, and yet, weird, weirdest of all is that there are people saying out loud, you know, the newspapers carrying front pages that say, Russell Brand did this and that, um, and it's saying it as as a statement. It's not. I mean, I guess the papers then, you know, they follow up in the text with allegedly and claims and so on. <laughs> but, you know, the front page headlines really, really are judged. You are judged <coughs> before any court or legal process. And it just feels, that feels really wrong. Um, you know, not that I defend anybody who's done anything wrong, but just feels wrong that you can be publicly called a rapist without any legal process. I don't like it. But that's what has the accusation has been made. Ah, no. Let me just do something while I'm, I've got the nut and uh, the strings off. Although I can't, thank you, can't get them all too slack because the, this is what I don't like about these locking tuners. They, they don't give me access to moving the strings out of the way enough. As you can see, I'm dealing with the G and the D are still pretty taut. Which they wouldn't be if we wound on an extra 
bit of um, I don't know, centimeter of string onto the tuner before locking it. Anyway, sorry. Is that before locking? No, leaving it slack and allowing it to wind on an extra uh, centimeter or so. Anyway, um, yeah. So that's what's going on. So that's that's old um, the British system. Um, it, it does feel like judgment by media, but that's not the only thing that currently feels like judgment by media. It's, it seems like you know everything else. You know, people. People. We have this situation in Britain where people, if they want to, they can call somebody some terrible name like a, or accuse them of racism or misogyny or sexism or whatever and thousands of people automatically believe them without feeling any need to verify or to, you know see if there's anything factual going on which is a really disturbing thing but uh, we seem to be we seem to have gone that direction which is not good now i'm just going to tune these up something like that it's not perfect but what I'm doing now is I'm looking at what I've got uh, in terms of action okay well it's well high is the nut seated properly yes it's a little bit long but that's fine <clears throat> so what I'm going to do now is discover what the playing action is at both ends and I'm going to make a record of it and then we're going to work out how much uh, to material to take off the underside of the nut to get the perfect action it's very hard to do this but let's go with a big chunk of 0.5 first and we'll go 0.5 uh, we'll go 0 0.9 1.2 1.2 I say that's 1.1 oh that's the wrong one I don't want that 1.1 so high E high E 1.1 could be 1.2, but we'll call it 1.1. Uh, let's look at the. Uh, <coughs> let's look at the. It's interesting. The the spread of the uh, the um, what's it's on here is exactly the same as it was, but actually it's too close to the edge of the neck for my liking. So anyway, we've got 1.1. Let's go to 0.9 here and see. Where it's, it's lower on the the bass strings. Uh, let's go point eight. So that's comfortably point eight. So low E naught point eight versus one point one. Then if we I'm gonna draw my nut here and draw my measurement at the high E and the low E slots but for that I'm gonna to have to take them off again so this is the fiddly fiddly stuff and if we keep our fingers crossed that the strings cooperate <laughs> well one of the things I kind of you know I've said before that when I've got something on my mind that I tend to wish to talk about it but it's kind of <clears throat> it's worrying because I know that there are people who will jump upon anything I say and you know and either get either you know, deny it or you know, counter it exactly or um, 
in my, many cases just um, become insulting and uh, not many not on real love guitars not too often but you know people seem to be can be very triggered um, right, so we've got 438 using the high E notch as a reference point and then using the low E 372 which is to be expected so we want to take minus 1.1 1.1 off there, which leaves us with uh, 3.28 as a target on the treble side, and then here it's minus 0.8. Uh, I'm going to use a calculator for this because whenever I do it myself, I'll get it wrong. Um, yeah, so so that thing about wanting to talk about things and and worrying about people taking offence, really, f for an opinion, which which I think is really, in itself, a kind of disturbing thing, that my alarm bells go off in this day and age. They, they are constantly going off in our culture at the moment because we, uh, we exist in a time where I am f afraid to, s to share with you my guitar setup subscribers. I'm afraid to share with you what I think about the world. Now, the point is, yes, yes, Mr. Oh, I don't want to listen to you blether on about, fine, I, I get it. it. It's not, not everybody wants to he hear that anyway, but it's my shed and I'm here. Um, so 1.1, I've got more to take off the treble side. Sorry, I always switch things. So I'm taking more off the treble side than off the bass side to begin with. So here I go. I'm just gonna press down harder on the treble side than the bass side to begin with. Yeah, so, you know, leaving aside whether anyone wants to hear opinions about this, that and the other, th that's that's called real life, you know. If you were hanging out with, if I was hanging out with you, you would, presumably, if we were friends, you would tell me your view on stuff and I would hear your view and share my view and then we'd meet some friends and they would kind of sh share their view of stuff and, and so on. And, in, you know, w in the olden days, we would remain civil even long enough to hear those views and to even kind of discuss them a bit without calling people names and, you know, screaming at them to shut up. But we seem to not be able to do that anymore. So here, am I, here I am thinking, you know, we're in a funny time and I'm nervous about where things are going and that's there's some reasons for that and it's part of me my identity or you know my makeup and I'm censoring because I I don't want to get into or I don't want to trigger somebody so that they scream and I I guess that that fear of being honest about what I'm thinking about something in case of triggering somebody else that's the worrying place we've got to and I think a lot of people um, have experienced or are experiencing that um, at this point in time. Uh, so, you know, the, I guess it means I, I have to talk about <laughs> the things that are bugging me. And, and as you know, I've been kind of following the uh, progress of the Russian-Ukraine war closely and you know uh, I'll worry about where we're going with it and what what the future is now what I mean by that I'm not I am like anyone like Elon Musk I'm concerned that we don't end up in a nuclear war a third world war or whatever you want to call it um, of course I'm I don't want that to happen but I'm also uh, reasonably reasonably confident about what I think has to be done, um, you know, a bit like I think we're in one of those Second World War moments and we're in danger of appeasing uh, somebody who's frightened us with their threats and their force and their, um, you know, their straight out attack. Um, on another country. So I think we have to resist this thing and 
I'm not a fan of people who um, say, well, what about, you know, when in Britain did that and Tony Blair did this and George Bush did the other and, and Britain's evil and, t and America's wicked and evil and all that stuff. And, you know, it doesn't matter, <laughs> you know, we, no, no, we're not perfect. We've done things that uh, I'm not nationally proud of. But it doesn't, none of that changes the fact that it's my considered belief that Vladimir Putin is a leader whose track record bodes very badly for us in Europe and potentially the world, but certainly in Europe, insofar as he, his modus operandi is that he strikes with strength and takes away and bullies and threatens his way to what he wants. Um, and up until now, the majority of us, or the rest of us, have um, had our bluff completely called and held back um, because we're terrified of escalation, of the escalation that Russia has threatened. And, you know, I, I, somebody commented on uh, one of my videos the last time I mentioned it. You know, they said, you are aware, aren't you, that, uh, you know, there are some Russian-speaking people in the eastern part. Um, and if I believe Ukrainian sources, um, those people have uh, been, had no issues speaking Russian. They're not oppressed. They are and even, even if they weren't allowed to speak Russian, it would only be in the same way as you would expect people coming to Britain to learn English in school. You wouldn't, um, you wouldn't encourage people to learn Punjabi and, and Arabic in British schools. You would hope that they would learn the uh, mother tongue of the country they've moved to. And, you know, right down to the other thing about the claim that people wanted to break away and, you know, I'm afraid that when Russia tells me that people in a certain area, when Russia says Russian speakers in a certain area wish to become autonomous or to invite Russia in to help them become autonomous, I, I'm afraid I don't take it seriously, full stop. Um, it's, not, it's not a credible thing. It's, it's, it's the method by which Russia expands its empire. And no, that doesn't make England or America perfect angels either, just because Russia, I believe Russia does dangerous things, bad things, dangerously. So they're not connected. They're not causally interlinked. The, the whataboutery doesn't work. There can be several different conflicting things being true at once, or apparently conflicting things. Anyhow, so the point is, um, I am not... I'm I'm, <laughs> I'm incredibly worried about the state of what's going to happen if and when Trump gets re-elected. Um, I find it extremely worrying, full stop. But uh, I think I'm not at all a fan of Trump. And I know that millions of people will immediately say he's the best thing that ever happened. But they don't my experience, they don't just say that, that they then immediately insult me if I don't agree. And I find that's quite telling, that they, they don't feel like just saying, no, actually, I think he's really good because of this, this, and this. They, they seem to insist on um, attacking and insulting as soon as uh, you say that you don't think you, you're not looking forward to Trump being president. Well, I'm not. Um, because I know absolutely, certainly, in my, as, as much as I need to know, I am as certain that Putin uh, is depending on Trump uh, abandoning Ukraine. Um, and, it, and if, you know, if some people say, well, that's what we should do, we shouldn't be paying for it, you know, America first, and yada, yada. And I can understand that. You know, I can understand you, you not wanting to you know, commit your resources 
um, to what might seem like a far away thing. But I think I can't be comfortable with that because uh, it isn't just a matter of, oh well, if Trump gets in and, and stops supporting Ukraine, all that will happen, yeah, is that Russia will just um, keep what it's got in Ukraine and everything will just go back to a sort of normal, just with um, just with Russia having more of Ukraine. It won't be that. It literally will not. It will be a victory for uh, forces of might and that victory will ensure that um, Putin keeps the territory he's stolen. He doesn't care about the cost of it, we know that. Uh, he'll keep the territory he's stolen from Ukraine and then he will use the abandonment by the US and uh, the inability of Ukraine to fight alone. Um, so look at that, That's my calculations have gone down. See, I did that perfect calculation, but it's gone, it's gone overblown. It's just a fraction over. So how did that happen? Hmm. Anyway, so there you go. That's what happens when you talk about politics. I'm a fraction off. I'm going to have to bulk it a little bit. Um, anyway, yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm extremely worried about it um, because uh, I just genuinely, I don't see it as a, good thing for the rest of the world including America you know for that to happen but I get that some people in America would just like that to happen and you know you're entitled to have that view um, and I guess I'd be interested to know what you think if Trump is elected president and if Trump uh, pulls out of supporting Ukraine I'd be very interested to know what you think that will lead to in terms of um, the future of those, those territories and Moldova and other places in. Because I think you, you can't just disagree or you can't just be a complete Trump supporter but not have a view about what, um, what will happen once, uh, you know, if and when Trump gets re-elected, you know, I, I, I think it would be really weird for, for you not, if you have that opinion that you want Trump to be re-elected, I think it would just be completely nuts if you don't have any opinion on what happens next in regards to uh, Ukraine and or the other Baltic states, um, who, if you listen to them, all of them, are certain, more certain than any Westerner who doesn't have to spend time there, they're all completely certain that Putin will continue uh, and, and make his way onwards to attack their territory. So it's very, I'd like to know if you're going to, I mean, I guess somebody's going to ring up and say, you a-hole, Trump's the best thing, and yada, yada. That's fine. You expect. I know. I'm realistic. I know there are people out there who think that. Um, I'd just be very interested to know what those people who think that think will happen. You know, and maybe maybe those people who are pro-Trump, they'll just say maybe they'll just parrot what he said and just say, well, he'll he'll finish the war. And I'd like to know how will he finish the war overnight? You know, in, in such a way that doesn't. Um, reward uh, imperialist aggression, um, you know, and, and and if he gives away Ukraine overnight as his way of solving the problem overnight, then what what does happen um, a little bit in the future down the line? Um, I, I want to know. You must have a view of it. Anyway, um, so. Just that you've got to see there just how <laughs> how difficult it is to trim down things when you're down at the tiniest measurements of uh, getting a nut 
to the right height. It's very, very difficult. Um, probably should do it in stages rather than in one go. So I'm just going to put a tiny bit of extra material on the bottom and we'll do it again. And this time I'll be triple careful, which I thought I was being. So hey, excuse the noise a minute. Hmm, lots of nice dust all over me. <sighs> anyway, um, yeah, it's, it, it's just, uh, I think the, the weirdest bit of all, as I said, is, um, is, that fear of conflict. I'm not, I'm not frightened of argument, but it's not argument. It's never argument. It's 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 a straight out attack. You know, when somebody disagrees with you on the those subjects, whether it be flat Earth or Trump or even UFOs, God forbid. Anyway, as soon as people disagree or trans issues. Um, it becomes a violent and poisonous straight away, and I just find that it's quite quite worrying. You know that we seem to have lost the ability to disagree intelligently, um, and I think I think that when I when I find myself being insulted by someone for having a different view, you know, and you could watch the comments in the below this video um, which might say you know might just prove the point somebody go you a-hole you think this about that and you British people we da 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 and second world war this and um, if it wasn't for us you that the other America does this and does that and whatever and it, I've had that kind of response more than a few times in the past and when that happens that's when I realised that the people, because they don't argue or discuss the point, it, it shows me that they didn't arrive at that point by argument and reason. That's the important thing. You know, they, these tend to be points that are arrived at by art, a matter of faith, or steps of faith. Um, because people who arrive at a position by reasoning um, are always willing to explain their reasoning, you know, because they, because it matters to them that it's a, a, a reasoned position, not just a dogmatic um, cult position. Um, and yet, you know, you could, you could take ten responses from people who disagree, or who find, yeah, who disagree and, and want. Trump to be re-elected as the president of the most powerful country in the world. Um, you know, there'll be people who want that, whereas I don't. Um, but it'll be really interesting to see, out of ten, how many of those people, um, first of all, are rude and uh, you know are out outright attacking, um, which will be interesting, and and how many are civil to the point that they uh, uh, show an interest in reasoning or explaining their reasoning, their position. I suppose it would be, you know, basically arguing their position, saying what they believe and why. I remember watching, listening to a podcast quite some while back, but there was a podcast called or is a podcast called the atheist experience i believe and um the the people running it atheists surprise surprise um they their premise for the show or the basic principle behind or the this format of the show was that they were evidently a group of atheists who had no belief in, in any god um and they were open to having conversations with 
uh, theists who held a belief in God, hold a belief in God, and um, the only condition of it was um, they invited the, the theist to say briefly what they believe, so, you know, what religion is it you believe in, or if you have a religious belief, what you believe, and then, most importantly, why. Um, and incredibly, in all the years I've probably listen, listened to that program, I never heard a single theist attempt, far less succeed, to answer the question, the part that said why. What They, they might just about say what they believed, which is, I believe that there's a Holy Spirit and this and that and the other. Um, and, But they would never, not one of them, ever uh, said why they believed it. So they only ever said what they believed. Which is quite incredible, really. And the, the hosts would regularly say things like, you know, come on, I, I know what you believe, so tell me how did you arrive at that belief? Why do you believe it? And uh, they just never could. I mean, I'm not exaggerating. They literally never could. Um, which I think was really telling. So we'll go back to 120 here. So 120, it's too high. Oh, I'm such a, you know what I did last time? I know exactly what I did. <laughs> I did too far because I didn't take off the 0 0.3. Oh, that's why it was obvious that was going to happen. I overcut. Um, right, so we got, uh, say, 5, 9, 120, 140. This time we'll get it on track. 140, uh, take away uh, 20 equals 120. Let's take it to 120 for a minute. Hi E, 120, just to be on the safe side. And low E, 120, 140. Low E, 140. 40, so slightly different this time around. So we're going to go So that's okay. So that's <laughs> right. That's 0 0.9, and that's 1.1. Now that's better. Silly me. So we do the same process. This time I've removed or minused the action, the playing action that I actually want over the first fret. So we've got 485 on this now. 485. Be minus 0 0.9. Four, that would be 475, 476. 0 0.9. Yeah. 476. No, wait a minute. All right, I'm going to use my calculator because I'm hopeless. All right, so we get this one. We've got 488. 488 minus 1.1. We know that it equals 377. 4. 488. 378. 378. 1.1. 488. Yep. Okay. One is 385, 395, 395 equals 395. So there's my targets this time with the correct amount added on. 395, 485, 395. Okay, so 485, so that's about one, just over one to take away. So let's do it. Yeah, anyway, so um, if you disagree with me on this, that's fine. But please, I, if you're going to say something about it, I, I, 
I respectfully request that first of all, if it triggers you and your first reaction is a hole or what a complete yeah, um, then don't don't bother commenting because you're not going to convince me, and you're not going to feel you're not going to gain anything from it. We're just you, you, all you'll be able to do is insult me and move on, and that's fine. It's not very productive. But if you catch yourself disagreeing with me, I would invite you, if you do feel triggered like you feel you want to insult or attack, I would politely, in the spirit of friendship, ask if you were would hold on to that feeling, that urge. Don't give in to it. Um, and instead of insulting, um, consider explaining, responding by saying, I disagree with that, um, and here's why. You know, or I think this, that, and the other should happen. And then that principle of, well, tell me what you think and why, or what you believe and why, or what you think and why. That's what... That's, a, that's where we stand to learn from each other. Um, so that's what I would politely ask you to do. And that way we would just stand a chance of knowing more about each other, you know, people that are different from us and hold different views. Because that's what's never, in this sort of instant snap, snap offence, situation is what we never do is learn anything or gain any insight about the situation because we just snap and uh, kind of attack really um, so anyway that's my my request which I've asked for before on this channel and I couched it in different ways like saying you know if you if you disagree fine but if you just intent on insulting then I'll just hide the comments or whatever if it doesn't add anything constructive then I'll just bin it um, which of course we have I have the, the right to do because it's my little domain kind of thing um, anyway so having kind of said that and in the spirit of not feeling um, shut down and prevented from saying what I think. I'm, you can see I really worry. I mean, I, I worry about continuing, in one sense, continuing to support, uh, you know, play a part in a war. Um, but actually, I, th I, th I think I've reached the, the view where I don't think we have any choice. I think we have to um, take a stand on this um, because <laughs> it's too much at stake. Um, and the alternative is it's it is like the you know the um, second world war days where the alternative is is effectively to appease i just i think we can't <clears throat> that's what i bloody well hate about these strings What's this then? This is a, a D. Let's find another D. I think this might be a D. What, what brand of strings were these? I don't know. I think they're all the same color. I think this is a D. I believe it is. Anyway, yeah, so I am I am concerned, I think I yeah, I think we have to take a stand. I think I think even if it even if it pulls us towards uh a really scary conflict that none of us like the idea of. Well, nobody liked the idea of it in World War Two, but we had to do it. Um, so I think we're in that place again. Uh, and, you know, I guess a lot of people will not have that opinion and they'll think that it's better to stay out and leave Ukraine to its own devices. Um, 
and I'm not sure I, well, I don't, I don't agree with that. Come on, give me a D, give me a D, I think that'll be a D. Um, yeah, so, so that's where I stand, and of course if I, from the position, if I, if I clearly do think that we have to, we have to hold this stand against Vladimir Putin, then it follows that uh, America kind of becoming uh, inward and insular again uh, would be catastrophic, really. Um, you know, and people might say, well, f fighting against Putin is catastrophic. That's not a D either, oh, for God's sakes. I, I don't want to rip open a brand new pack of strings for this, but I may have to at this rate. Yeah, I mean, we, I just think we've got to, we've got to take this stand. So that's a G. We literally don't have a D kicking around. What's these? Maybe we've got one on here, but that, that's going to be short probably. In fact, it's probably too short. There's a set of something. Um, okay. There's the D string. Yeah. Anyway, so from so from my perspective, um, yeah, I, th I just I think the well, I think if we if we pull out or stop helping Ukraine, I think I think what um, what will happen in the not too long term will be disastrous for Europe, I and mean, we'll be back at the same point at a slightly later date but with Russia massively more uh, militarily prepared and um, we will stand not a chance of withstanding it. So, what do we get on there? Just fit on there. Anyway, that's, that's why it bothers me. Um, but of course, I, I also understand the feeling that, that people might have of just wanting nothing to do with it. It's not our fight. Why are we involved in anything to do with Ukraine. Um. If we can just get this now to um, tune and we can then... Oh, God almighty! Do you see why I can't stand locking tuners? What an absolute pain in the absolute... Now I'll go and look for a, another string and another string. The next time, another string, another string. Right, what have we got here? Let's have a B now. I have to straighten out a B and shove a B through there. Anyway. anyway. So. That's where I stand, folks. It's funny how, it, it, of all the things that I find really disturbing. I think it's the it's how inverted commas dangerous it's become to say what you think. And I don't mean you know people go, oh, of course you can say what you think. You know what you saying is, you know it's a critique of anyone who doesn't like or says they don't like woke. You know, and then they get say, ah, oh, you don't like woke because. All woke means is being considerate of other people. So that means you just want to be an out and out, you know, hateful person, and you don't like the fact that you can't be hateful and get away with it. And it's not that. It's this whole thing of, uh, it's this whole reactive culture we're in, where you, you actually can't seem to put a, a lay out your position without getting attacked. Not disagreed with, just an out and out attacked. So that's what I don't like.
Okay, so after all of that breaking of strings, I've got a pretty low action. Um, I'm just going to double check it. Still a bit high, but it's actually enough. It's fine for me to do the, the fret leveling with, which I'll do now. Um, so we can eventually stand a chance of finishing this evening instead of running over. Um, yeah. So yeah, I'm, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a very. I think the Americans have got a. I envy them the uh, Constitution, the fact that their free speech is kind of enshrined in that, written down, um, and you know you can even if somebody doesn't like what you are saying, you can hold to the right to say it. Um, even if sometimes it's not actually totally respected, um, but you can always challenge it on the basis of the Constitution and say, wait a minute, this isn't right. You know, the Constitution says, um, and when it comes down to it, you've always got that in the back pocket as your ultimate sort of defense or your ultimate, I don't know, backup. Um, and we don't have that in the UK, which is very strange. So we we don't we don't have a, a it's a sort of double edged thing. We we don't really have a a right to um say certain things or discuss certain things. So a, an example of that would be the current um the current disagreement or current debate, let's call it, about um whether or not uh let's say a trans what's called what's known now a person who's known now as a trans woman whether that person is a woman or not and there there are there are lots of different arguments you know the the pro trans lobby um all for inclusion and and would say that it should be up to a person to to define their gender and that the rest of the world should socially and legally um, acknowledge their choice in that. And I totally understand why that feels like a good thing to do and an and a inclusive thing. Um, but in the, on the opposite side of it, which is worrying, is I understand the arguments that say, um, that, that say actually if a man can identify as a woman, um, then uh, what the, the rights that women won for women as defined as people with female biological um, parts. There we go. 15 is low. Remember I said 16 is high? It's because 15 is low. And my fret leveling is showing that up which is what this method does anyway yeah so that so there that's a, an issue that i can see two sides of it i happen to pref prefer the or the argument of the um the side that says um men can't be women and vice versa um, but that's not acceptable, um, and people I, I know some people who who do say that um, and insist on having the right to say that, and they get visits from the police who say that their statement about their 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 uh, opinion, a considered opinion that. Um, and it's only opinion, it's not fact, it's just a considered opinion that men can't be women and women can't be men and there is no such thing as non-binary um, as far as they're concerned. Um, if that statement gets them uh, a visit from the police and threats of being arrested for hate speech, which is completely insane. Um, so I, I th you know, that that's the the kind of thing that bothers me. And same, 
and, and in a way that's a bit like the, the whole business with not feeling comfortable to say whether you know what my view is on Donald Trump or what, those kinds of things because what I know is that somebody will have a triggered type reaction um, and hit out as a result um, I'm going to put a little bit more effort on fret 15 or 16 15 and 16 yeah you know so they, they have a sim they have a similar thing in common and that is that they they're both based around the whole debate or lack of debate or the possibility of debate is permitted or shut down by reaction, by you know, people's feelings, how they how they decide um, you know, that their my belief uh, is a is an attack on them, or somebody else's belief is, is a belief can be an attack on their existence, which is crazy. But you see that in um, fundamentalist religions. Um, you know, certain religions literally say, if you attack my prophet or priest or, you know, my, my key figure, I take it as a personal attack on my, my person, my body, my, myself. And that, that, and then they, then they, once that's established as a sort of a norm that saying I um, don't believe in the thing they believe in, um, it, then suddenly anyone disagreeing with their belief gets gets dealt with or spoken about as though with that question they have attacked the person of the of the person who does sh have that belief and that's an absolutely terrifying state of affairs in what was once a great enlightenment country Um, and it's it's frighteningly commonplace now, you know. And you, obviously, you see it in certain countries where, just for saying they don't share a belief in uh, an Islamic god in is certain Islamic countries, um, non-believers um, or atheists, whatever you want to call them, um, well, as soon as they're spotted and identified, they get they get ripped apart, and killed, and it's kind of okay it's the it's the wisdom of the mass the mass wants to do it and uh, you know in their minds the, the crime of somebody to not share their belief in a particular god is warrants being killed for it which is a in a world that we hoped to preserve and uh, care about and honour free speech and reason uh, that's just awful, an awful state of affairs um, but we are there and we're getting there in this country as well um, not only with, with respect of certain religions and certain people who Demand. I mean, we. What did we? What did I see the other day? Somebody saw a YouTube video of somebody saying, "Wait a minute. You know, you can't come to this country and um, tell me I I must do this, that, and the other." And the the person who was quite rationally making that point, because the the person who had a very sort of devout religious belief was telling him what he could and couldn't do in Britain, um, and. The fact that the, the person in question on camera said, "No, wait a minute, you, you hang on, you, we fought for free speech," and it, it wasn't. Don't make a mistake of thinking there was anything racist being said or anything like ah, trigger words. It was just something that the guy disagreed with uh, on because of his religion, and he insisted that the hero of the piece um, 
you know, shouldn't do that for whatever he was doing, filming, whatever. And when the uh, cameraman in question said, actually, um, you know, this is a this is Britain, and um, you know, it's not okay to come and declare that we must do it this way or that way. Um, police took him aside immediately and said, I I'm not comfortable with you saying that. Um, you know, and he said, well, why not? It's the, it, it's the truth. I mean, it's important, isn't it? And the person just said, no, it's, it's just I'm not happy with you saying it. It's provocative. You know, it's too, too uh, likely to provoke a response or a reaction. So, so we've got the whole of this, uh, the, the existence of rationality and reason um, it kind of hinges on the degree to which somebody will be offended, which is nuts, absolutely mad. Um, and some people just, when it, when I kind of, people fall for me into two categories. Um, those who don't see that as a problem and think, you know, when someone like me starts talking about it, they'll say, oh, just you're, you're being hysterical or, you know, don't take it so seriously, or it doesn't mean any of that. And then there are those people who get it that the principle is is so important um, that it it's absolutely vital and, and deserves consideration. So, um, but there you go. An awful lot of people don't think it deserves consideration anymore. But I do, and it bothers me. And you know the same sort of emotional response shutdown kind of mechanism uh, is um, kind of at play you know when people when you share a view about uh, you know something like Ukraine or Trump or whatever and the only responses you get from that are emotional outbursts um, And attacks really. Three seventy two. This one is three fifty one. Three seventy two, three fifty one. Three seventy five. And that's point two off each of them, so it's a straight removal. Yeah, anyway, so I I think we're for those long winded reasons we're we're in a dodgy place, very dodgy place in the in Great Britain. Um, I think, like I say, it, it, to me, that bothers me is not even the different views. I don't mind somebody having a completely different view about, um, I don't mind, it's nothing to do with me if somebody has a different view about the greatness or otherwise of Donald Trump. Um, you're, you know, you're completely entitled to hold and keep to whatever view you personally have arrived at about it. That's That goes without saying. But the first thing I'm not going to do, the last thing I'm going to do, I should say, is to attack you and throw an absolute fit and insult you when you, or try and try and create conflict with you when you say, "Oh no, actually, I think Donald Trump's a, a really good guy, and here's why." What I what I want to know is why you think that, and I think, generally speaking, the world would be a hell of a lot better place if you felt the same way when you heard that I actually don't think it's a good thing for the America or the world um, and here's why uh, you know, I think we, we could all do a lot better by learning to ask why you know, people very often do tell you what they believe um, they don't often tell you why and they certainly don't tell you why if you don't ask that's the important thing so I, I think the, the, the really critical thing is to to get into the habit of asking why. 
but to do that we have to get past the that initial explosive um, anger thing that we seem to get stuck straight into you know the insulty shouty screamy I want to fight with you now Just get outside now I'll, I'll kick your butt so many so many people on subjects on YouTube respond that way it's very odd it's worrying and odd in the same measures um, anyway I should like it to be different from that so I think I think that I my part in it is I have to remember to try and ask why you know when when I'm when I come across somebody I I sense that I disagree with or it's clear that I disagree with and they tell me what they think um, then the smart thing is to is to ask why they believe it. What makes you say that? Because <laughs> I, you know, the truth is, I'm fascinated. Why? What? <laughs> I, I really want to know. For the people who think Donald Trump is the best thing, will be the best thing for sorting out the Ukraine-Russia problem. I want to know what those people. I want to know what you think he will do, credibly to fix the problem, um, you know, because you must have an idea, and if you haven't, then, well, maybe that's, <laughs> that speaks for itself, maybe, but, and I think maybe, what I used to think about when the believers were on that particular program, and they never responded to the question of, um, They'd say what they believed in, but they would never say why. Um, it was interesting that I think they, I think they, part of their reaction or the kind of attacking thing, the creating the conflict part of it, was possibly to avoid having to say why, because um, actually that would that would be a quite a difficult thing to do, and and I think often it comes down to. You know, when it comes to religion, some people say, well, because my book says so, or some people say, just because it is, um, which is never very satisfactory when our mothers say that. Why, mum? Because I said so. You know, it doesn't help us learn anything. It just, it just lets us know that they've decided and they ain't going to change their mind no matter what happens in the world. Um, anyway, so... I think that's how I want it to be, and uh, so if I say anything on these boring setup videos that triggers you, in the spirit of friendship, please consider why it triggers you, and if it does trigger you, and you find yourself feeling very strongly that you disagree, please find out more. Use the opportunity to find out more, because if you just attack me to the extremes of even if you get, take out your gun and kill me because you because my statement about such and such made you so mad you just want to kill me you gain nothing you, you are no wiser now some people don't want to be wiser but I think an awful lot of people also do um, but you have to in order to, to learn something, you, you, have to, you have to ask why at some point. And actually, I think, you know, from, from I think my experience that um, when you, when people don't ask why and, and they don't, when they, you know, they encounter somebody with a very different opinion to their own, that seems completely op oppositional to their own. The truth is, the reason why they don't ask questions about it and explore that person's point of view who they disagree with is because they're not actually curious. We are not curious when we do that. Um, we don't actually want to know anything different. 
and I think not many people probably ever admit that to themselves. They would, they often, we often think we, we like to believe we're learning, open-minded, blah blah blah. Um, but I think we're we're as open-minded only as the degree to which we are willing to ask why or find out more. What makes you say that? What do you mean when you say? What makes you? Why did you come to that conclusion? What evidence have you got? for that. That's challenging too because when people when people are holding a view because it feels better to hold that view and their gut tells them and whatever, um, being asked for evidence is a very a very confronting thing because they didn't the truth is they didn't come to that position by finding evidence and looking for and taking heed of evidence. Um, and actually, there's a, there's a disconnect really between people who uh, hold position on a sort of basis of belief and no particular reference to evidence, and you know they, they're not really when you when you examine it, they're not really that bothered whether their belief is a reliable way pathway to truth. Um, they're more they're not really concerned with the truth, despite often saying, this is the truth, this is the one truth. Um, they, they don't really seem to care about truth the way that, you know, if you really did care about truth, um, you would be, you would demonstrate uh, a kind of meth methodical curiosity. You would demonstrate the willingness to question your own biases, um, biases, and so on. You know, it would matter if it really mattered to you whether the thing you believed in was true or not. Um, you would be not just you'd not just agree to um, t testing and questioning your own views. You would you would welcome it because it's the only way you could get or the only path to a stronger sense of belief um, or stronger belief in the thing you claim to believe um, so and that's why scientists do it the way they do it you know they know that the more they risk the certainty of the thing the, the, the account of how things are um, the more they risk that and allow it to be challenged um, if, it's, if it stands up to that challenge and that examination, then they have the pleasure of knowing or being able to say that that hypothesis about something um, you know, is, is stronger than it was a month ago before it was tested and challenged by some rigorous, well-educated scientific peers, for example. Um, and, you know, people... people who are bothered by the truthfulness of something, uh, demonstrate that willingness to challenge and constantly check for their own biases and constantly challenge them and to want want to stick to the um, you know adhere to the, uh, the the rules of supplying evidence for the things you say are true. Um, uh, and I think you know we we see around us very easily see the people who um, for whom that isn't uh, very important, um, and that's you know they're not better or worse for it. But what they when people uh, when people state that they believe something to be true because they've made a choice based on the, their faith in it being true or because they have faith in something that tells them it's true, uh, then I guess what they're saying is that that's, the, the, that's how they measure true truth. Um, they, you know, it's based on how much they want it to be true. Uh, 
as old Matt Dillahunty would always say, is, is that a reliable pathway to truth? Um, and if truth is just something you choose to believe in, um, if that's as lightly as you take the term, then, of course, um, everything you believe can be true because you believe it and you have faith in it and you've chosen to believe it. Therefore, that's, just, that's true enough for you. Uh, which is okay for your kind of personal spiritual life, I suppose, but um, nothing that we know and that we're very grateful that works around us, the world of science and all those technological things that we enjoy, none of that would have worked on that basis. Um, well, I think it's true that helium does this um, because, not because I've tested it or I've allowed others to test it and contest it, um, uh, I just believe it to be true. I just got a very strong feeling about it, and you know, just we wouldn't we wouldn't have anything that we have in terms of technological progress. And some might say that's a good thing. We should go back and be Amish and ride our little pony traps everywhere, which it seems like a very pleasant way of getting from place to place. Anyway, but so that's my take on things. <laughs> I'm only explaining it because I'm, I'm sort of amazed at how, you know, when I think of just talking about anything that I'm bothered about or interested about, um, I'm quite astonished sometimes at just how much fear there is in me about saying what I think about something because I know that, um, you know, it'll be it may trigger people and when people are triggered and they're, they're the thing that's triggered is effectively a belief system which they the, and the more that that thing they believe is in, interconnected or inseparable from their sense of selves the bigger the reaction the more violent the reaction and the more unpleasant the reaction is going to be and you know i see it all the time in people's comments and they they don't know they're doing it they're just they're just reacting that way um, but it seems to be because their sense of self is is tied up with their beliefs and you know if, if you are if I am disagreeing with them um, for some people that, that's an intolerable position and has to has to be fought against which is how weird is that that you know, you, you can't allow other people to just to have their own view on something. I've never understood that. I guess it, it must, in my book, it means that your so-called belief is very flimsy if you have to kill those who don't share your beliefs. And people go, oh, that's a very trite sort of assessment of what's going on but actually it is that simple there is a discomfort if, if me not believing in your god for example makes you angry so that you will chase me around the campus or around town and chop bits of me off and kill me dead because i don't believe in the god you believe in then there's no doubt that there's something hugely insecure about your belief that you think your all-powerful deity needs you to kill me for him to have a nice day or maybe you don't really believe that you're just using it as an excuse to be violent and murder people who disagree with you maybe that's the simplest explanation I don't know because I don't do it that way but yeah I find it hard to it's hard to um, not bring these considerations into a conversation if I'm talking about stuff because I'm I'm here passing my Sunday time doing this job on Jeff's guitar and um, I frankly got I've got time to pass in you know no, I don't always want to just talk about frets all day long or all afternoon or all evening. 
and uh, but then to feel nervous about well if I don't just talk about guitar and if I talk about anything else then people will get angry and they'll go I don't want to hear your your opinion about world peace or I don't want to hear what you think about anything other than the correct action for this model of guitar which is why I came here you're supposed to be serving me <laughs> no no anyway so the reality is I may disagree with you you may disagree with me but we ought not go to war with each other for having differing views and we ought to ought to take a moment and ask why what makes you say that that's got to be the most valuable use of a few seconds and imagine if we actually could agree i mean in truth you know in the real meaning of the word to to the phrase to agree to disagree because often when people say that they don't really mean agree to disagree they mean that we're going to back out but i just, I'm, I will hold my grudge against you for having the wrong view still. And agreeing to disagree means actually not just agreeing, but it, I would like it to mean reveling in the fact that we disagree. Because therein lies all interesting possibilities of learning something else that we don't already know. And that would be fantastic. So... I don't want to just agree to disagree. I want to relish in disagreeing. Oh, yes. So, having done the fret crowning after the levelling, I am now almost using all the green tape in the world. I've used quite a lot recently because I've been doing refrets. Um, so I'm now I'm just going to, I'm just sort of protecting the bits of the finish that the uh, uh, sandpaper may come into contact with. We don't want that to happen. So, so the next stage of this thrilling party one hour and 17 minutes in, we take our micromesh, we take our various grades of sandpaper, we get rid of our big tile with all the cut up pieces of sandpaper on it, no, pieces of masking tape, and then it's time to <coughs> go it's time to light the lights it's time to meet the muppets it's time to start the sanding and polishing out now normally i do this off camera uh, but for some reason i'm carrying on so this is 400 grit at this point and it's the same grit as the uh stuff on the fret leveling bar, the banana as I call it. So I'm just sort of cross sanding to ease out some of the 400 grit marks in that direction. I'm just cancelling them out and then we'll get into running up and down the length of the neck. use a pad so I'm just going to get these things out of the way um, I'll need that hold that there uh, probably that right uh, what did I do oh yeah here it is This won't 
massively tall frets to begin with so um, but it was a very light fret leveling anyway um, now you've heard me say this before but <clears throat> anyone who worries about the fret dust somehow magnetically sticking to the uh, pickups let me tell you for the 50th time fret dust is not magnetic there you go I won't say it again it's not magnetic so it won't stick to the frets okay if on the other hand you were to use wire wool then that is magnetic and can get stuck in your pickup windings <coughs> where it can rust. <sighs> right, so there's just loads of this. <laughs> um, but I suppose I keep on because, uh, yeah, might as well make it one video instead of two. That's it memory allows me to do it. So this is noisy and boring, but in the true Zen sense, we don't want to be rushing to the end of it. We would not like to reduce this present moment right now to merely a means to getting to a future moment. That would be unliving. So what we do is if we find ourselves wishing ourselves into the next future moment, where somehow miraculously everything will be better or something. If we find that, then what we should do is concentrate more on the feeling of doing this than right here in the moment doing it. Reveling in the sound of it and the tiringness of it. grit which I need to buy some more because I'm all out of 1500 grit I'm so lost without it apparently our gay hating Chechen warlord Ramzan Kadyrov it's supposed to be in a <laughs> either in a coma or dead as we speak. You never quite know in this world of Russian Federation intrigue, but he wasn't looking well at all. Bloated and uh, know whether uh, it was a Putin involvement or not but uh, it doesn't really matter it's as likely to be as any uh, any kind of cause behind it but um, um, I can't say I'm sorry these are uh, hideous damaged and destructive human being. Yeah, I mean, not that it will 
change too much, but I sometimes wonder if people like that somehow manage to convince themselves that they will they will have a long and happy life. When they do such wicked, in inverted commas, wicked things, you know, like living very much by the sword, and then, surprise, surprise, they come to a sticky end before they have a chance to get old and, you know, bounce their grandchildren or whatever on their knee. it all for maybe in the present moment it was all good enough having all that power and access to all that drugs and weaponry and control over human lives and maybe maybe that maybe he was completely buddhist and enjoyed it thoroughly and unquestioningly wordlessly in the moment hmm. by the way I'm only joking I don't think there's anything slightly zen about craving power and wealth weaponry and torturing people and controlling people and so on and so forth Tusk string tree to do. We've got rid of the choke out on the high E and the B bends. And then we clean up, check everything over, and fit some new strings. And then we'll stretch them thoroughly and uh, set up the tremolo, or intonate them. We'll set up the tremolo, then intonate them. Of course, it's interesting to see that there are Chechens fighting with Ukrainian armed forces loyal to Ukraine. Um, and I think they were probably stemmed from the historical loyalty to the previous much loved and respected leader of Chechnya, Kadyrov's father, who was he killed, killed off by Putin? Something like that. And then Ramzan Kadyrov became the puppet, Kremlin puppet. And, uh, That's all the masking tape removed. So then I like to get me a, a cloth. That's not very, is that a good one? It could do. Get me a cloth, get me some more naphtha, the good old naphtha, the good old safe solvent. And 
going to go down the fret again to remove any lingering uh, marker pen that might still be there and any dust you see sometimes a little bit of it comes off on the, uh, the cloth Yes, yeah, so of course there is, there is um, some rumour that if Kadyrov is in a coma or has died since falling into a coma, then um, plenty of people suspect that that's uh, a Putin-assisted state of health. Um, and uh, because, just because Kadyrov is, is a potential threat as an armed warlord, on the playing field and um, I guess you know one thing Putin doesn't want around him when he's trying to reconsolidate power is anyone with a capable uh, military force not saying that uh, not saying that Kadyrov's soldiers were particularly effective by all accounts but they seem to they seem to they got a reputation for fake staging fake attacks so they could post TikTok videos, um, apparently, you know, of them sort of shooting bullets everywhere at what appeared to turn out to be <laughs> invisible enemies. But uh, it was very grand looking. So they sort of got this reputation for being uh, colourful warriors. 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 Um, sort of slightly toy soldier-ish. But having said that, um, it still represents a military force that Putin does not want to have around. Or any risk of any contest, a contest between him and anyone's armed force. Right, so that's the nut affixed. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to remove the tusk string tray. And I'm going to fit the tusk, uh, the tusk one. So this is the metal one coming out, sorry. I'm going to fit the tusk one and I'm going to make the hole slightly larger because I think maybe this one is nearly the same, but often the tusk screw. Actually it's about the same. No, it's still fractionally larger. It's better just to widen it so that there isn't any risk of uh, splitting the wood. So I think about a little slightly wider two millimeter hole. That looks about right. I mean technically we could we could use the original back in there for, for the sake of not changing it over and let's do that uh, if if you have to change it over then I tend to just slightly widen it okay so that's that that's that right next step some oil on the fingerboard uh, old rag old dish rag Zoom out for a minute. Uh, yes, yeah, so I kind of expect to possibly hear something tonight. Um, there's some horrible, some horrible, horrible, horrible plastic sticking up. Yeah, so I, I should maybe find out tonight the fate of Mr. Kadyrov. I suppose it, in a sort of totalitarian ruler, 
sense it doesn't hurt to whack a few people you know when you're trying to remind everybody you're the boss um, it's, it's never a bad thing I, I'm being tongue-in-cheek I think it's a terrible thing but from their point of view um, it's, it never hurts to instill the correct amount of inverted commas respect uh, for you in your leadership position uh, to knock off a few of your closest enemies okay so I'm going to first of all now I'm going to thread all these strings through um, and then we'll fix them at the other end and then we'll do the uh, we'll do the setting up the tremolo in a minute which is, is fairly straightforward as I sort of hinted before but one of the things to do if you remember keep in mind that the tuning stability on your guitar Jeff knows this because I've been through this before but the tuning stability on your guitar is comes down to two primary things first the, your then the quality and the, the uh, condition of your nut and the slots so the correct material tusk is very good um, the slots need to be uh, smooth and friction free um, and uh, the second half of it is or second part of the equation tuning stability equation is that um, you stretch all of the slack out of your strings before you start playing and or before you start um, setting your tremolo and things like that so we're going to do that physically as I always do and I recommend that you, every time you change your strings, you do it thoroughly for as long as it takes so that you can pull the strings quite hard without them going out of tune. Um, because if they go out of tune, it's, it's the slack still coming out and they will continue to be out of tune for a, uh, a long while until there's no more slack. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go for the D first. So first thing I want to get them all lined up, line up all the holes so I can thread through. And my way of doing this is always so that I don't end up with strings breaking, um, stopping me slacking them off in case I need to do something. You don't want to just have to lose a set of strings just because you've put them through a compressor to, or a crushing action here. So I'm going to slack this off, put it on the through the peg, put it in its position. And then I'm going to pull it back by about a centimetre and then fairly gently lock the thing off. And I'm going to get my automatic winder because that's why we brilliant homo sapiens invented tools to help us do these things, right? So hold that in there and wind it on. Now this extra centimetre of wind on, some people will say, well, why do you need to do it since you've paid for locking tuners, man? And the reason you do it is if you want to, the option at a later point, you may, may never know, but you may have to slack the strings to do something. I don't know what exactly, but um, if you want to have that option, then do as I say, because this little extra piece of wind on, let's say you had to undo it in a minute the, what it means is that the crushed piece the second time you can push the crushed piece right the way through and out past the locking part so you're not crushing the same bit twice that's the first important thing about it it gives you the option to slack off and retighten whereas you saw that I've already two of these strings have already broken because they just don't like being tightened and released once they've been crushed because crushing is just not a good way of holding strings in place, frankly. It's primitive and it's useless. But, you know, we insist on doing it. I don't personally buy locking tuners for myself. I don't see the point. I get perfectly good tuning stability. A combination of stretching and um, using a good nut material and well-cut nut. Well-cut nut, man. 
Okay, so there's those four on. Four on. Now remember that I've, you won't have to do this because I'm just, the reason I've got the uh, tremolo tilted all the way back and locked pinned down by the springs is because um, I want to set it up for these strings with a, a fixed range of movement um, and uh, so I'm going to do it all in one go and then set the action finally. This is a slightly bit different from some guitars in the sense that uh, it's unusual in that it's a strap type guitar but it has a, a recess behind the tremolo or under the tremolo plate so you you kind of that's where you get your um, pitch up movement from. So what I'm going to do now is just sniff off all the excess strings right the way flush, as flush as I can get so that nobody gets spiked like so and bin them and then it's onto the uh, stretching part so now because I know these are now um, uh, they're freshly fitted I know I'm pretty confident they aren't going to just break unlike the uh, older ones when I tried to stretch them if you remember they just broke anyway so there's my first thing I'm going to tune up now to a, a pitchfork <laughs> pitchfork So I'm going to take each string at a time and I'm going to stretch the string between thumb and four fingers to get rid of the slack in the string. And it will detune the string as we were expecting that and then we'll tune it up again. And the idea is we'll just keep doing it a few times until there's very little or no further detuning. So we tend to find that the wound strings will hold the most slack in them and we'll detune the most over time. But it really is worth doing this at this point because this then will become, if, as long as you've got the nut right and you've got your slack stretched out, this guitar will stay in tune and play in tune. stretch again so not easy not exactly fun quite hard on the fingers you can buy the plastic string stretcher tool but personally I broke more strings using that than I do with my hands because I can't feel when you're using the plastic tool you, you can't feel how much force you're putting into it and it I found it with easier to break strings that way. So very close. Okay, now we've got, um, I, I forgot the action is a little bit fractionally high, so what I'll probably do is just tweak it to perfection with the 
uh, my Hosco nut files. Let's just double check this. Yeah, tiny bit high still. I should probably meant to recheck it and sand it from below um, before I glued it in, but then I went ahead and glued it in, so that was my mistake. So I'm going with my 0.3 millimeters action. And what I can do as I'm um, as I'm adjusting this, I can uh, I can just make sure that the the slots run backwards and downhill at the same time. I have to be very delicate or gentle with this. Um, helps it's a, it helps to widen the slots so there's no grip. That's one thing that making the slots is good for. Often I try and do it without resorting to the uh, file like this but if you do have to use it to tweak the final bit then at least you um, you know you're you're widening the fret uh, the, the nut slot very slightly which is good for your no friction situation. Okay. Out of the way, thank you. <laughs> yeah, it's looking good. Let's see, that's on the mark. So tiny little tweaks here. <laughs> Nearly there. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> then I'm going to take these off. <laughs> Do the same over here this way around. I think that's on the mark already. As I think, now oh, it's close. I think it's only this one that I want to adjust slightly. <laughs> right. Thicker strings seem harder to work with the slot files because there's more material to remove so they don't cut quite as reliably quickly. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to focus on the tuning, uh, the tremolo setting. So the first thing I'm going to do, I know that all my, um, the tremolo claw is all the way in. Claw? Yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lift this up. I'm going to place my, uh, my little block so that I've got this horizontal where I want it. And now I'm going to tune. I'm going to get my uh, tuning tuning machine out. I'm going to tune this 
back to pitch. So what we're doing now is uh, see what we're doing with the action. The action's too tall. So I'm going to, while I'm here, I'm going to reduce the action to the target that I want. So just bear with me. So let's see how much it is right now. It was 1.5. It's now but a fraction over that. So I'm going to turn it, uh, each one of these, a quarter of a way uh, counterclockwise. Well, let's go half. Now this will make it sit lower than I really want. But it should end up being where we want. What am I doing? Where am I? So I'm now setting it back up in the, that's a little bit low actually, and that is, that's about right. So this side is fractionally low. Let's get this back to where we need it to be. Let's go, let's go. So 1.5. Just under, just under, just under. Uh -huh. A tiny bit more here. A tiny bit more, a tiny bit more. 1.5, just under, it's coming down, coming down, coming down, right. So that's my target position, and what I want to do now is to plug this into the tuner, and I'm going to tune up with it locked in this position, i.e. supported by the, the uh, this little wedge. So I'm going to... Right, so this is now going to be, I'm going to tune it to E. Okay, that's tuned up in this position. Now what I do is I take out the block and it goes sharp. So I now get a screwdriver and I pluck this string here that wants to be an A but it's currently a B. And I undo the tremolo claw screws and you see the note coming down. You might be able to see it. It's going to be flat in a minute it's just coming flat of B and we're going to drop into the B flat department and then we go up, down past B flat and we want this note to come down and end on A remember go 
down flat of B flat. Once it goes down past there, we'll come into the sharp of A department. There we are, sharp of A. And we're coming down. A couple of still sharp. And it's a great way of doing it. So we end up with our tremolo pitched horizontal or parallel to the neck. Parallel? Yes, not perpendicular, parallel. So A. There we go. So that's us done. Beautiful. There we have it. Oh, yes, the last thing. Must not forget. Well spotted. Ah, the intonation. So let's do it again in this position. As a, hmm, I can just about do it there. So I'm just looking at this. I think this D is a little bit far forward. Lovely saddles on this thing. Really quality milled looking blocks of steel, metal. So I'm just going to tweak those three a little bit because they're just slightly out of Kimbo. Here we are, intonated, horizontal, ready to go. So, thank you for watching. Um, see you soon on another one. And uh, yes, yeah, Sunday night, I'm going home. Bye for now.